just, I was like, wait, where am I? All right, so we are going to be switching over to the amazing Lisa Mead, who has done some really incredible work in her district. Uh, it's a really small country dis district. It's a beautiful place to visit. Um, but she's going to talk to us about staff culture. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Lisa. Um, thanks, Lori. Lori, how can I turn off my background? Because I do have a guest joining me. And I All right, so click on the little up arrow next uh -huh. to where it says stop video, uh -huh. click choose virtual background, yep. and then click none. Awesome. Can you see Shelly behind me now? Hi, Shelly. Oh, Hi. great. Great. <laughs> um, and then I'm just going to share my screen if you'll give me one second. Sure. Is, am I still there? Yep. You are there and I can see your screen. And you can see my screen. Great. Um, so as I've been listening all morning, especially in the beginning of the morning, I kind of wondered why Lori asked me to be here because <laughs> you're all really, really smart. And I don't know half of what you know, but as I was listening, I can't find the camera or the panel, so I'm just going to go with it. As I was listening, I realized uh, in order to do any really cool idea in a building, uh, you have to start with culture first and people need to feel safe and um, heard. So that's why I think I'm here to talk a little bit about what's worked in our building. And I invited one of my amazing teachers, Shelly Conlon, to sit in so she could kind of validate that I'm telling you the truth. And I didn't just wake up and say this worked <laughs> in my building. <laughs> so we're going to start with um, we were just talking a little bit before um, it was our turn. Uh, we have three different categories. Talk a little bit about meanings, a little bit about um, uh, saying what you need to say. It's one of my favorite songs. And uh, just the building, looking around the building. And I'm going to start with the look around. So I think I was the seventh principal in five years yes. here. So when I went on a first walk around the building and a couple walks thereafter, you notice different areas that don't look like anybody's looked at them for a long time, right? There's tattered um, boards, there's no school uh, student work posted, there's no positive messages or anything like that. So we really as a group committed to cleaning up our space and uh, making it a space that looked like we were proud to be here, um, including digital signage, which we're really, really proud of. Um, even had some contests with students to create different commercials that we um, could post in those areas. Um, I think a big part of my job is to model, model, model. I'm hoping that's um, I think Lori's been to my building and she'll see that. She's been here when she knows I might have something bad going on personally, but I, I really, nobody in my building knows it, except maybe Shelly, but um, nobody else, because I just need to stay positive and focused on the good work that we're all doing and keeping kids uh, front and center. I have a I'm pretty sick sense of humor. I can laugh at just about everything, which helps me in most of my days. Um, and then just being out all the time, greeting everybody in the morning. Everybody seems to come through our main entrance and into the um, uh, where the teacher mailboxes are, so I can see everybody. And in the beginning, um, nobody liked that. My first year here, everybody like nobody made eye contact with me. They just wanted to go to their mailbox, not look at the principal, and go to their space. But now, you know, you just keep saying hi enough, and you do it enough times, people start to say hi back. So I'm very lucky at that. We're gonna hop over to meetings. One of the things we do in our meetings is we end with shout outs. So when I first started here. I would hold the faculty hostage. I wouldn't let the meeting end until at least three people shared something positive about each other or a colleague. And in the beginning, literally, oh. time stood still. Like nobody would share. Um, and now I'll just let Shelly talk about how over the last three years, how that's kind of blown up. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely tell you the first time that she said, does anybody want to share anything? And everybody just kind of, it was crickets. And we all just kind of looked around and I was like, People didn't feel safe enough to kind of like share anything. And now, um, three years later, we can basically, ha we have like a section of the faculty meetings or any meetings that we have that are basically all shout outs and everybody's shouting everybody out. And not only are they shouting out, but they're also bringing all kinds of like gifts to all the people, whether they're gifting teams or whether they're gifting specific people. Um, it, it has definitely done a 180. And I think people really look forward to that section of the faculty meeting now, uh, just so that they can shout out their colleagues or our wonderful principal, Mrs. Mead. Yeah, I've only gotten one shout out for the record. I'm not keeping track. But anyway, we'll go to the next topic. <laughs> um, uh, 
giving up traditional faculty meetings uh, for teacher's choice. So two different, we had two different events this year. We did uh, a wellness day where instead of coming to the faculty meeting and listening to me talk, you could pick three different activities. It was badminton, bowling, or walking. And nobody was happy about it. Teachers were like, this is corny. I don't want to do it. I can't believe you're making me do it. I'm not going to do it. I was like, nope, it's a faculty meeting. You have to pick one. Um, so, but then when you got there, like these competitions broke out and people were amazing, especially the bowling. It, that's what we were teaching at the time in PE. So the teachers got to experience what the kids were doing in bowling and badminton. And I've actually had to say the faculty meeting's over. You can go now. And they were still playing. So that was fun. Another time we had teachers create a board kind of like um, Ed Camp style of different apps they were using in the room that were they were willing to, you know, share during the faculty meeting time with anybody who wanted to learn more. That really went a long way too. So people got choice. Um, I think they appreciated that. Last year, literally three days before the school year started, maybe four, we got new Promethean boards in every classroom. <laughs> It's, that's exactly how you should do technology rollout. You should buy it when the teachers aren't here and you should put it in their rooms so that they come back and it's brand new and they have no idea what happened to all their old stuff. They really like that. I hope you'll take that as a takeaway. Um, they don't like that. Uh, so Lori was part of, uh, we used some of our, her drop-in days here to come help us. But the other thing I was able to do that I think teachers really appreciated is we had, um, you know, you always have those early adopters, like we heard about Rachel earlier, you know, in your building who uh, is willing to, like they've already studied the technology, right? Because they were so excited about it. So I had this uh, math teacher who um, kind of was our Promethean wizard. So I was able to modify his schedule to not give him six assignments. I gave him five assignments. And then his sixth assignment was called Promethean 911. So during his prep lunch or that Promethean 911 period, at least once a day, teachers could make appointments and he would go help them with their boards. Because what I found was uh, teachers were maybe a little embarrassed. Oh, definitely. A little embarrassed to admit that they needed help, and it's easier to admit that to a colleague than to maybe somebody else or wait a month down the road for the next workshop. So that I think that worked really it well. It did. That worked very well. Yeah. Even, um, you know, one of our um, most traditional teachers, she was right across the hall um, from him, and she just called him all day long. He finally got her to where she needed to be, but she didn't, I didn't need to know that she was embarrassed by it. So I think she felt better about her abilities, if that makes any sense. And then under say what you need to say, positive notes are a really big deal in our building. We still like cards and notes and pieces of paper, but we also um, create padlets where we share compliments to each other. I did link that in the slide. Um, making sure that we're celebrating teachers in public. So every month I do a board report and the newspapers there. I make sure I mention teachers and all the work that they're doing every single time because it's really not about me, it's about we. I've heard that earlier today too. Um, and then on social media, um, I tweet so much that I actually have people who come up to me now and say, are you going to tweet that? Like, it's not even like, hello, Lisa. It's just, I take a picture and they're like, are you going to tweet that? Even a mother <laughs> yesterday of her daughter, um, she's like, are you going to tweet that? I was like, I, yes. As a matter of fact, I guess I am. It'll be about three seconds. Um, <laughs> another thing we do in our building is teacher cheer. Every two weeks, I meet with my school counselors and we talk about all the students um, that we're worried about. But we also... From that group, they nominate two teachers they see going above and beyond. So if you look at the top of the screen up here, um, we just give them little surprises in their mailbox. So Stewart's is a local company in our area that'll donate gift cards, and we give those out to teachers. And sometimes I buy corny little like Easter bunnies at Easter time and give those out. But I think those have gone. Yeah, that was um, very nice idea. They, those have gone a far, a bit. Um, having tough con conversations, um, but trying to lead with heart. Um, and uh, I think I think that's hard to do when you're brand new, but now I think I'm able to do that a little bit better. We all make mistakes, and sometimes we have to, you know, really consider how big of a mistake is this really? I mean, it feels like a really big mistake today, but how can we fix it and repair it? And one of the things I learned before Shelly um, became the teachers union president, she was my building rep my first two years. So the more I could talk to her, and say, listen, this is the part of this I can't deal with, but what about this? And then we could have private conversations about it. We could help our teachers better feel supported or make repair for what, they, what they've done. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing I think I'm really proud of in our building is we try to allow teachers to 
uh, share new ideas and then implement them, which was another tie in I thought as I was listening to all of your amazing presentations today that you know building culture and learning all these new ideas and implementing them you're going to need somebody or a team to say that's okay to do. Did you want to add anything Shell? No, I, I just think that um, building the culture really helps on every level and and Lisa's done a great job here and we love her. Yeah, I, I have to jump in and just say, Lisa, just like Jason, who joined Rachel and the assistant superintendent that Michael Dresick and Dan Poland were talking about, like, if we don't have the right administrators, the fact that it's a Saturday, you took the time, you carved out time and space to be part of this, like, think tank day. Um, I mean, want to applaud you because if we don't have the support of our administrators, we might have the best initiatives and programs in the world, but that doesn't mean they're ever going to you know, be able to be rolled out in really meaningful and deliberate ways. So, um, and what you're talking about, about culture, that's the foundation. If we don't have that, then none of this is possible. None of this work is possible. So um, your contribution today is so valuable. And I am so happy that Lori has connected us because I'm hoping that that live student showcase we host next year that we've got your young people, you know, being the leaders, showing us what this looks like, what's the direct, you know, impact. And um, I know that we've used that analogy about, I've used it about the Casablanca. I don't know if you know that movie, but at the end they say, the last line is, this is the beginning of a wonderful friendship. And I'm really looking forward to continuing to learn with you and your community. Great. Um, and I thank you for, for sharing the importance of building that culture. Thank you very much. And big thanks to Shelly for driving over on her Saturday. So I'm yes. very excited for her. This is Thank fantastic. You,